Okay, everybody, this is Mr. Oliver. This is your next flip lesson on appropriate data displays. In this lesson, I'm going to show you when to use certain types of graphs, whether to use a line graph, uh, when it's better to use a bar graph, or a stem and leaf plot, or box and whisker, uh, or a line graph. I don't know if I already said that, but yeah, sometimes you have to use a line graph. So let's go ahead and just get right to work. Um, now here, what I have is when the data is numerical, <clears throat> like numbers, and categorical, non-numbers, um, it's sometimes best to use a certain kind of graph. And <clears throat> a bar graph goes best with that kind of data. And you'll see in a bar graph, you know, like right here, um, that you usually have, <coughs> usually have down at the horizontal axis, you have categorical data, like um, like months or days of the week, or you know eye color, favorite brands, and on the vertical axis, you'll notice there is numerical data, like um, you know temperature or how many uh, people have pets or whatever. But that's for bar graphs. And just here's I'm just kind of showing you some different kinds of graphs. Here's another one I like: probability of death by country. So if you look at this graph carefully, um, and you live in the United States, you have a 100% chance of dying. Um, same thing in Germany. Same thing in Japan. I guess um, it doesn't look good for any of us. Oh, it's just for fun. Uh, I think this this graph just means that we're all going to kick the bucket one of these days. Sorry to disappoint you all. Okay, uh, when data is spread out over a period of time, it is best to use a line graph. And line graphs are good. You'll notice that the, the horizontal axis has some element of time to it, whether in, in this case it's years, sometimes you'll see it in days, or hours, or minutes, or even seconds. But usually the horizontal axis, the y-axis, is going to be given in um, some type of unit of time. And of course the or the vertical axis is many times going to be numerical. It's going to be numbers. But we're looking at um, a period of time. So we're starting in 1996, the number of dolphins sighted went rose, and then it dipped, and then it rose a little bit, and then dipped a little bit, and then rose again. So um, just by looking at this graph, you can get an idea that the populations of dolphins was rising and falling, and maybe just depending on the number of tourists, or perhaps it was uh, for other reasons. But that is what a line graph looks like. Here's another one, temperatures. You can stop, pause it, look at it. Temperatures, here's another one on uh, Cinderella and her, uh, you know, what happened in her life. Poor Cinderella. She, you know, started out with terrible sisters, gets invited to a ball, goes to the prince, you know, that's right there. She's at her, she's at the peak of her, of her life. She's, she's in ecstasy. And then, uh-oh, she gets turned back into regular Cinderella. And then, all right, Prince Finder puts a shoe on her. All right, there you go. All right. Um, when given many numbers that you have to organize into some kind of order, and it doesn't have to be a lot of numbers. You can really do this with a few numbers, too, but a lot of times it's with a lot of numbers. Um, you have a stem and leaf plot. Stem and leaf plots you did in fifth grade, you can go ahead and pause the video and look through this. Um, but um, stem and leaf, they can take on a, d a lot of different forms. You know, this one is a very g generic one that I kind of pulled off of Google Images. But, uh, you know, a lot of times you have the stem number, which is like the first number. Maybe it's the tens digit. Maybe it's the hundreds digit. Maybe it's the first number um, in front of a decimal point. It, there could be a lot of different... Um, variations of the stem. Uh, the, it has a key that tells you what everything means. All right. Uh, when you want to show how spread out the data is, you know, the spread of the data, use a, and we've already done this, what do you think it is? The spread of the data. All right. Here's a, here's a hint. Meow. Meow. What, what, who says meow? A dog, right? No, not a dog. Box and whisker plot, right? Because Cats have whiskers, I hope. All right, they do. And you all know what a box and whisker plot looks like. But you can just, you know, just by looking at it, that's the point. Just by looking at it, you can 
you can see, okay, uh, here's the middle of the data, here's the top quarter of the data, here's the bottom fourth of the data. You have a really good idea of the range. You can just look at it in, in that respect. There's, there's a lot of different ways you could look at this data, okay? So that's a box and whisker plot, which you all should know by now. Uh, when data falls into intervals and frequencies, it's best to use a rhymes with plistogram. Yes, that's very good. Very good rhyming. Histogram. You got it. Histogram. Okay? Not Instagram. Not Instagram, you crazy people out there. No, it's histogram. Histogram, you'll notice that it's very similar to a bar graph. But instead of um, categorical data down here, you know, where you have eye color or states or um, <clears throat> brand names or whatever, you have numbers. You have intervals. Okay? So there's... You know, anywhere between zero to ten employees that make, what, $50,000 a year. There's 11 to 21 employees that make, uh, or I shouldn't say this, sorry. It's 10 to, zero to ten that they don't make, sorry. It's 50 employees right here. I'm not even reading this the right way. 50 employees make anywhere between nothing to $10,000. I hope nobody makes nothing, but... That's, that's how that goes. Um, there's about 300 employees right here. 300 employees make between 11,000 and 21,000, et cetera. But that's how that goes. All right, uh, another thing you're gonna need to know is um, what makes graphs misleading. You know, in misleading graphs, you can't necessarily say they're, they're dishonest. You, you can just say they're misleading because they don't always show the, the whole picture. And um, this particular graph is misleading because of um, this right here, the scale of it. The scale of it is a little bit harsh. It's a little rough. I mean, you have, you have it going up by what appears to be 1,000. 80,000, 81,000, 82,000. So I would assume that, that this is 79,000, which isn't good, really. When you, when you have a graph, you want the vertical axis to be zero. You want, or I shouldn't just say the vertical axis, you want the vertical axis to start at zero. So what that does, everybody, is it makes, it makes these bars definitely look a little misleading. It makes this bar right here look much, much bigger in, in respect to this bar right here. And in reality, this bar right here is only, what, $2,000 more than this one? And it gives the appearance that, that this bar is, what, over twice, or three times, I should say, three times the height of this bar. So that's definitely misleading. Looking at this graph, you might think, wow, there was a huge increase in house prices, when in reality it was only a $2,000 increase. So... You have to be very careful. You'll see this a lot on the news. They don't always have their, their vertical axis begin at zero. And it's just because, you know, it's not because I think they're trying to uh, lie to us. I, I think it's just because, you know, not everyone's a mathematician. Not everyone's a statistician. Some people don't know how to um, set up graphs. So they just feel like they can start it any which way. Uh, here's what it really should look like. So if you look at this one, then you can see, wow, it's not such a dramatic increase after all. I mean, it did increase a little bit, but it's not as, uh, as shocking as the previous one. I'm going to skip through this. Uh, here's another one, and look at this one carefully. What makes this one misleading? You can pause it and, and figure it out, but what, try to figure out what about this graph seems misleading. Okay, so if you've thought it over a while, you might have noticed that this, again, this scales a little bit off. When you have a scale, you better go up by equal amounts every time. You cannot change the scale midway through. Okay, so you'll notice like right here, it goes up from zero to one, that's fine. It goes up from one to two, that's fine, that's going up by one, that, there's nothing wrong with that. And then it jumps from two to four. Okay, well, this space right here is the same space as this. So why would this be equal to two units when this is only one? So that's very, um, 
that that's misleading because you're going up by too great of a distance. So if I'm going to go up by ones, I better be consistent. One, two, and then maybe I should have a three here and a four here and a five here and go up by those amounts. Otherwise, um, and of course, it's going to change the, the look of the data. But you should do that. Uh, if you're not going to have it go up by those amounts, maybe go up by five and then 10 and then 15 and 20. Um, but like I said, it's got to be consistent. You can't go 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and then all of a sudden, 4,117, something like that. That's like something, you know, a crazy guy would do. So don't do that. Okay. Oh, well, here's another one. Here's This one's from uh, CNN. I pulled this one off of Google Images. And this one's a, a pretty, um, pretty famous graph that CNN ran. And they quickly changed it because I think enough people called in to say that's really not telling you the whole story. But like I said, these aren't necessarily lying to you. There's nothing about this graph that lies. I mean, 62 Democrats agree, 54 Republicans agree, and 54 independents agree. That, that's absolutely true. What is not necessarily completely honest is the way it's represented. This bar right here for Democrats looks huge in comparison to Republicans. So it makes it look like the Democrats are highly in favor of something over the Republicans, when in reality, it really should look kind of like this. And, and when you look at it now, the, the, um, the differences between the bars are not as, as striking. And it's all, you know, really, it all comes down to zero. You know, if you, if you go back one here, this does not start with zero. So someone at CNN, threw this together really quick and just kind of made it work in their favor. And you, you got to show the whole story. That's just how it is. Okay, so that does it, everybody. That in concludes your flip lesson. Make sure you guys took good notes. Make sure you write a little summary at the end and um, be prepared to ask any questions tomorrow in class. Everyone have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.